Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another vlog. So first and foremost, I just want to start off by saying that as of making this video, there is zero animosity between me and the organizers of Ubanta by Bike Race. In fact, I have covered uh, a few of their races after this incident. Um, we have moved on after the incident. Um, it was a learning experience for me and I believe it was a learning experience from them on how to run a race. I just want to shed light on what transpired in the race and what led to my DQ. I do admit that part of it was my fault but I also think that some of it was their fault as well. So um, you'd be the judge. Um, this was actually an exciting race at the end of my 2019 racing season. It was a big year for me. I, I came into this race very fit because uh, I came from around Bohol and before that we went into Taiwan to do the Taiwan KOM challenge and I after the Ironman Cebu I focused solely on cycling so, so my legs were pretty strong against my usual self uh, during this day so um, I hope you enjoy this one hey hey what's up it's 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm up because we are joining a race. We will be racing in Bugo. Uh, road race. So, we are going to meet James and June uh, in Makdo. Tadisai. Without that, we'll together be riding to, or riding a car. Bugo. So we started this race uh, in Bugo City Hall or Bugo Municipal Hall and we toured around the city of Bugo for like 10 or 15k and then the total of the race was uh, the total race distance was 80k if I remember it right. Uh, what I remember do though is that it's not uh, 100 kilometers as they have posted it in Facebook but it wasn't really a big deal for me. Um, so we the, the race the race course was uh, in Bogo through the Medellin Isle of Man and then went into I don't know if it was done Bantayan but I just followed the I was mostly in the lead and the entire day so I just followed the escort motorcycles who was in some cases didn't know where they were going we actually got lost three times in that race and then I lost quite a bit of time but that's okay. Um, yeah, so uh, during the start of the race, there was uh, attacks left and right. Um, if I remember it right, it was like Ramon Nito Espinosa or Amon. Most locals know him as a very strong cyclist who instigated the attacks and then counter attacks came, counter attacks came, and then I found myself attacking as well. And then it, surprisingly, it was the attack, the stick. But uh, unfortunately, I found myself behind. Uh, an n -Max motorcycle uh, it, it was actually the cameraman of the race so this is what led to my disqualification so I'm gonna leave it up to you guys if it's if it's wrong or right but so let me just explain I did the attack I was able to get away from the group as you can see in the video or as you can see in the clips that I will show I'm showing you um, I was able to leave the group I was able to get a decent gap but I was I ended I ended uh, I ended up at the rear of uh, an NMAX motorcycle whom is carrying a cameraman uh, for the race so I kind of thought to myself like okay I could stick here for, for for a little bit they are part of the race anyway they should know that they shouldn't be providing any assistance to me because they're part of the race they should know that and uh, maybe maybe my, my thinking at that time was maybe um, they were doing that just to you know, get clips, get video clips, get pictures to, 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 to get pictures to promote the race and promote it the next time they will stage that race. That was my thinking because that was how it had, that's how it works in Ironman or any uh, uh, triathlon races that I, uh, I have entered. And um, I think it's worth mentioning though that this is the only DQ that I, I this is the only DQ in my entire racing career uh, I have never been DQ'd in an Ironman race wherein it's not draft legal wherein in 
a cycling race, I was um, compared to a cycling race where it's a uh, it's uh, compared to a cycling race, it's a draft legal race, so it's it's kind of bit of annoying actually. But you know, as I've said, I've have gotten over it. So I found myself at the end of this motorcycle, and um, if you can see in the video, I moved left. There's another big motorcycle, and then I moved right. There's another um, big motorcycle as well. So I wasn't able to really get, um, yeah, I wasn't really getting good amount of space away from the motorcycle. And if I soft pedal, the, the peloton will catch up on me. And to be quite honest i actually talked to the few guys who was in the race and was doing the race i was able to get away from the group i talked to a few guys after the race and they told me i was able to get away from the group not because of the motorcycle but behind the, the main peloton uh they were actually looking at each other and you know they were pointing fingers on who's gonna do the chase part of it actually is that most of them are thinking that you know the, the guy up there is a triathlete there's no way he's gonna make this stick so uh, they just they just let me go um, as far as how long I was able to draft that motorcycle I don't remember maybe longer than it should be but had I won that race I don't really think that, that was the main factor because it's an it's an 80 kilometer race flat race and then there's a bunch there's a peloton behind it there's no way I'm gonna put my uh, there's no way I'm somebody who doesn't have the legs that day goes out on the attack at the first few kilometers and then uh, hold off or uh, hold off the peloton, hold off the main peloton until the end of the race. So also during the race, if I remember it right, um, Rolly from Lapu Lapu, I forgot his family name. He was actually screaming at the driver of the motorcycle and the cameraman to uh, move away or to get out of our way so that so we wouldn't so we wouldn't get any draft and you know we, we could just you know work together and um, try to stay away at that point really I wasn't into that breakaway I'm not really convinced that we are gonna make that uh, move stick so a couple of kilometers after um, <coughs> Elmer Navarro from Team Go For Gold who was riding a motorcycle on that day came up to me and said they are really really far away they're, they're all looking at each other and who's gonna make the chase so if you're interested or if you have the legs go for it now there's a huge probability that you're gonna win this race so that was the time that I really committed myself into the breakaway and yeah uh, me and Rolly were working together uh, so me and Rolly were working together mostly during that race and uh, I remember going to the turnaround and halfway through the race um, I see Nico Otadoy and uh, Ramonito Espinosa able to um, distance themselves from the group. At that point, I feel like Rolly was sort of fading, so I, I, I kind of, you know, had a, at the back of my mind, I have a backup plan that if they are going to catch up, then we're, all four of us are going to work together. So uh, a few kilometers. Later, they were able to catch to us, and um, funny thing is, at that point, my GoPro stopped working. I told them that, hey guys, if any of you are, uh, if any of you are interested to be in a video, just please don't attack. Uh, let me pull out the GoPro from the case, and let me just fix it for a couple of seconds, and then, you know, we can we can proceed with the race afterwards. And then the good thing they all agreed, so. Um, at that point, I tried to remove the GoPro from the cage, remove the batteries, and then put it back in, and then I was able to catch film again. So it was it was really nice of them to you know just cease fire for a few seconds. And um, so during the race, Rolly was kind of like the guy that has like has the least uh, bike skills or bike abilities or you know, technical skills. So there was a long descent that I was really like able to put a big gap on him but at that point there was just only the two of us and then I didn't think that I could make a, uh, a breakaway stick on my own so I had to wait for him uh, but now I have Amon and uh, Nico Otadoy and then there was a few winding roads that we were able to get away from him and then as soon as he, as he got detached from the group Amon just like floored the pedal, floored the gas pedal and then we were able to stay away and um, at that point 
uh, I told myself like okay just be in this group no matter your position is you're already in the top three you, maybe you can fight for the sprint but at that point I wasn't really fooling myself I was with two of the best uh, cyclists in Cebu and um, to be quite honest I didn't have the I didn't think that I had the kick to outkick Nicole Tadoy, who's uh, previously a basketball play player, so he obviously has a very good fast twitch muscle, and uh, uh, Ramonito Espinosa is a previous sprinter as well, and he is a very good sprinter as well, so I'm a triathlete. I did, I have a decent sprint, but that only works if I'm against triathletes, but, um, you know, I, I tried anyway, but, yeah, so that was, that was it, uh, that was the... That was the end of the race. It was actually fun. So um, uh, I'm gonna show you show you guys a few more clips of this race. Going back to the disqualification, though, the one thing that really really broke my heart is that um, I am not usually that strong on the bike. I believe that's the strongest I've been on a bike because uh, I did some pretty good build. I went to Taiwan KOM. We did like a bunch of epic rides and I just really felt strong during the day and um, you know I felt that it was robbed from me because I don't think I don't think or maybe it's very difficult to get myself into that cycling fitness again it might be difficult to get myself back into the level again although I really wanted to and um, actually they it's already in, actually it's in their Facebook page and in their website that you will be warned first and then you will be disqualified in the second offense but I wasn't given the benefit of being warned I was just directly disqualified I don't know why um, it's, it, you can check it out it's in their Facebook page so uh, that was kind of bit about the laps so that was really what bummed me because uh, I, I felt like I felt like um, I felt like my, my, my glory was sort of taken away from me during that time uh, it, it you know this triathlete rarely rarely wins bike races like very rarely wins bike races so um that's uh, an opportunity lost for me i, I think and yeah so it's, if, if if you do check them out check obanta by bike race uh, rules they have they have pointed out that you will be you will be won the first time and you will be disqualified on the second time but as i've said I was disqualified right away. I did. I wasn't even given the chance to explain myself. Um, so yeah, that that was what happened. And uh, the the thing is that the thing that really pissed me off because uh, during the awarding they made me wait on, on, on they made me wait on the podium. And I was like, uh, on the I was trying to ask a bunch of guys from the committee and from the organizing team. Uh, what's the decision so that I can go home? I can just go home if, if uh, they, they they disqualify me. So uh, I was asking them if if I was really disqualified so that I could you know counter with saying that hey guys you should have given me a warning. Um, so so during the awarding I I looked like a fool there going back and forth waiting for the decision and then then they relegated me to tenth place, which was actually more of a more of a an insult because uh, um you know it's either you disqualify me or you don't you don't put somebody on third to tenth and it's not i'm not like peter sagan who elbowed somebody for for for, for third place you know i did it fair and square i believe so yeah that was the problem and back back to the ruling where they give you back to the ruling where they where you Back to the ruling where they will warn you two times. The first is a warning, and then the second is disqualification. As I mentioned, nobody warned me during the time because, uh, quite honestly, uh, Class B. We were racing in Class B, and that day didn't have any marshals at all. So we were like, we were there uh, with no marshals, no nothing. It just the escorts from from the local government units and the cameraman that sort of like trapped me into getting DQ'd because he was there, he's not moving away, he should have moved away, he should know that he's not allowed to be there, in my opinion. Well, I should have like slowed down, but uh, that was the call of the moment. I, I, I didn't really want to get caught by the peloton at the time. Um, unfortunately, I didn't film the exact at Unfortunately, I didn't film exactly how long I was drafting behind the motorcycle. 
because um, I was trying to preserve the GoPro. Of course, I'm not gonna be recording the entire ATK race, so I'm gonna. Pres I was preserving the GoPro for some um, highlights of the race. So, it, you know, I was. You know, nobody's gonna post a race where in your at the back of one motorcycle trying to uh, get away from a group. So that was it. But I believe, I believe though that Obanta by Bike Race has grown from that. I have grown from that experience and I believe they have grown from that experience as well. Um, after the race, they staged some quite good races, I've heard, and kudos to them. And I, we've, we've made contact with the organizing committee and um, as I've said, I have covered their uphill races in, in JY Busai and I was, I was gonna cover a few criteria mercies in Lantau until COVID happened. So yep, I hope you enjoy this one and uh, see you on the next vlog. Champion sa B and C. Pwede, next year. Usap ta, usap ta next year. Next year. Ay, may kategory na ha? Klaro na kategory. Oh, klaro na kategorya para dito malunhat sa mga batanon. 